Longest Journey by Peter Worley. London! Yeah, jump in. Well, well, first, I know this might sound silly, but do you mind if I take your picture with my mobile and also on the front of your car so I have your reg number? It's just something I do when I'm hitching, just to be on the safe side. Not mine at all, though. Smile! Why I noticed her, she was hitching a lift and this car had stopped. But instead of getting in, she had some kind of camera and was taking pictures. Then she got in the car, did she? Well, I'd gone past by then, so I don't know. Sorry if that's not very helpful. Yeah, we're grateful for all information. Thank you for coming forward. So, can I ask what's happened? I'm John, by the way. Amy. Amy. Yes. No, what, what you're doing, taking pictures like that, it makes sense. Well... No, it's sensible, you know. Precaution. Some men don't like it. No? Well, I say what I said to you. Do you mind if I take your picture? And they say, what, you think I'm going to rape you? No. And then drive off? And I think, well, sounds like I'd crossed your mind, mister. And what do you do with the pictures? I send them to a friend, which is what I'm doing now. Uh-huh. And then she'll keep them till I let her know I've arrived safely. You hear Chag a lot? I have been doing recently. I've got this boyfriend in London, so I go and see him most weekends. You got a job? Do a bit in a health club sometimes. Checking people in, dishing out towels, that sort of thing. I hate it. My wife goes to a health club. Yeah? Yeah. Does classes. But you don't? <laughs> don't have time. What do you do for a job? I'm an assessor. You know what that is? No. Somebody makes a claim to an insurance company, the company employ me or somebody like me to check it out, see if it's genuine. Right. Which half the time it isn't. You wouldn't believe how people lie. Claim things happen that never did or exaggerate what something's worth. So, for instance, there's a fire in a garden shed. Like as not, they'll claim they've been storing a Rembrandt in there. <laughs> he would not believe it. You do a lot of travelling. Oh, too much. Never at home. Right. All this hitching you do. Have you uh, had any, you know, bad experiences? Like? Oh, men coming on to you. Won't take no for an answer. Because you're very... Well, you don't mind me saying this, but you're, you are very, you know, attractive. And men have fantasies, don't they? Do they? Yeah, about hitchhikers and what might happen. Or maybe women do too, I don't know. I don't think so. Ah. Just men, then. Just men. So, no bad experiences? You're going to say, not till today. <laughs> don't worry, I'm just curious, that's all. One or two. Yeah? But I'd rather not talk about them if you don't mind. Oh, sure, sure. I just wondered, so. And do you often pick up hitchhikers? Depends. On what? Mood I'm in. Sometimes you want to be alone. Sometimes you don't. And today you didn't? Do you mind if we have some music? No, no, whatever you... Fine. It's just something I do when I'm on the road. Hi, darling. Happy Valentine's. <sighs> I've made this tape for you, for your favourites. So whenever you play them, it'll make you think of me and hurry back home. I love you. Sorry about the intro. It's just, just something the wife did. Oh, no, it's nice. Well, it's quite a while ago. And she did that for Valentine's? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I just think that's the nicest... Yeah. And you know, most original, because mostly it's just cards and chocolates. That's fantastic. Oh, you must have been... Oh, wow, great. No, it's hard to remember. Like I say, it's a few years old now. Yeah, but you've kept it. Of course you have. I would if anybody did that for me. Who wouldn't? So you're going to meet your boyfriend in London? Mm-hmm. What's his name? No, no, it's OK. <laughs> you don't have to tell me. You don't have to tell me anything if you don't want to. Jerry. Jerry. Yes. What does he do for a living? He's a chef. In a restaurant? Hotel. Hmm. Chefs nowadays. I was going to say they earn big money, perhaps not all of them, eh? Jerry doesn't know. Mm, maybe one day. Does your wife work? In events. Works in events. Must be interesting. Yeah, if you're into sick animals. 
First thing I can take him or leave him. I'd like to have a dog someday, but, well, not now. This boyfriend, Jerry. You gonna marry him? How should I know? How long have you been going out? About six months. That's long enough to know, don't you think? Well... Anyway, I'll tell you something now, voice of experience. It doesn't matter how long you wait, you only get to know somebody after you've married them. How long have you been married? Twelve years. And what's your wife called? Marie. Hmm, nice name. So, you arrived at the service station? Yeah. Then what? I went to the loo. No. I went to the shop first, shop first, then the loo. Then when I came out, she was there. By herself? No, no, the man I'm telling you about, he was with her. Of course, I didn't know who he was. Not then. No. But her, oh, her I recognised straight away. What were they doing? They were just standing, looking around. It's what they were gonna do. I knew that. They were gonna go to the cash machine and take some money out. And how do I know? Because it was like watching a replay of what had happened to me. I even knew what they were going to say to each other. What? Oh, she'd be going on like, oh no, please, please, you don't have to. And then he'd be saying, I want to, I want to. <laughs> How do I know? Because it's what she said to me and I said to her. So what did you do? Well, I, I thought, right, we've got her. This man she's with, as soon as I tell him what's happening, he'll think the same as me and we've got her. Please, I can't have. You've lost something? No, not lost, but left. Um, my purse. Your purse? With everything in, cards, money. <sighs> oh, left it where? In my flat. I haven't lost it because I know exactly where it is, next to the bed. I can see it on the table next to the bed. Oh, you stupid, stupid... Is it safe? Yeah. Oh, sure, yeah. No one else is going to go there. It's just... Oh! Are you going to manage without him? Exactly. Oh, stupid. And how will you? Oh, no idea. Well, won't your um, boyfriend be able to help you out, Jerry? Well, yeah, yeah, of course he will. You don't sound too sure. Um, well, see, the thing about Jerry, we're not together anymore. Not together? You he mean... dumped me. Just, what, a couple of weeks ago, so. Why I told you I was still seeing him, I don't know. I'm sorry. Ah, oh, it's OK. Don't worry. No law says you have to tell the truth to somebody giving you a lift. Probably wiser if you don't. I'm still getting used to it, I suppose. Hey. I don't want to admit it. Listen, I've never met Jerry, have I? No. No, but I can tell you now, Jerry's a fool, right? Jerry's an idiot. Well. Has to be. Thank you. Yeah. So... You don't have to tell me, but... If I'm not seeing him anymore... Then why... Am I still going to London? Not that it's any of my business. Because I've got to be there for these auditions I've got lined up. What well, acting? That's what I want to end up doing, yeah. These are to get into a drama school. Or, anyway, a drama school, because there are, like, four different ones I'm trying for. Ah, so you're going to be a star? Huh. Oh, somebody has to be. Why not you? Because I've forgotten to bring my purse. That's why not me. With all that to do, most important week in my life, and I've... Oh! Look, do you think you could let me off at the next services and I'll try and get a lift back and then get the purse and set off again? Is there anybody else in London might help you out? No. See, I knew Jerry from home. Then he moved there to work and I'd go down and see him and I was planning on moving down to join him. And then when that fell through, I thought, what the hell, I can still go to London. I'll just do it by myself. Not a very good start, is it? You've got one of these auditions today? This afternoon, yeah. I suppose I can ring and ask if you can change it or something. Oh, I can't believe I could be so stupid! OK, here's the deal. I'll lend you some money. Oh, no, no, really. Why not? Well, I, I can't. It wouldn't be fair. On who? Well, you don't even know me. You're Amy from the health club. Gonna be a famous actress. A little bit forgetful, but otherwise... Thanks, but... Service station, out three miles. So if you could drop me off there... No, I'm, I'm not gonna do that. Because what there is there, there's a cash machine used it before. No. So we're going to stop and I'm going to draw out some cash. No! As much as you need to get you through the week. And you can take that and I'll give him your address and then you can pay me back just as soon as you get home and find your purse there waiting for you. I can't let you. You can't stop me. OK, well, look. Look, here. This is my diary. I've got my address so you can copy it. That's OK. No, no, you've got to. And then you'll know that I'm going to give you the money back because you'll know where to find me if I don't. OK, 
Okay, let's be realistic. You're going to be what? A week in London? Just over. Well, she's not going to come cheap. So should we say what? 400? No! 400. And if you argue, I'm going to make it more. Well, thanks. Okay, so let's just. Hey! Hey, I know you. Sorry. <laughs> you forget me already. The idiot you took 250 off. Hmm? Hey, now, no, you're not going anywhere. Hey! What the hell? Look, this bitch get owes me 200. Get off her! Hey, all right, let me just tell let you. Let go! Look, she was hitching it. This was a couple of weeks ago. I don't know what he's talking about. Who are you, anyway? Oh, you know who I am. She was hitching. I stop and I give her a lift. She gives me this big story about going to London for auditions. Wants to be an actress. And then all of a sudden she can't find a purse. Hmm? Ring any bells? I've never even seen you No, before. of course you haven't. Right, only she's going to pay you back. And just to prove it, she gives you her address in a diary so you know it's genuine. <laughs> only I can tell you now, it's nobody's address. Save yourself the trouble with that one. Look, I don't know who you are. Look, I'm telling you. But I've got to tell you, this is my wife. <laughs> Your what? My wife. So let's just say you've made a mistake, mistaken her for somebody else, and we'll leave it at that, shall we? You're telling me this is your wife? I am. No, yes. come on. No, you, you think I don't know my own wife? Look, this isn't your wife. This isn't anybody's wife. You're becoming offensive. Look, two weeks ago I gave this bitch a lift. She pretends to have lost her purse and cons me out of 250 quid. Then when I try and chase her up, I find the address she's given me is Toy Town. If anything like that did happen... There's no ifs, mate. It happened. Then it couldn't possibly have had anything to do with my wife, because two weeks ago, right, we weren't even in the country. Were we? No. No. We were in Spain. On holiday. Then I've still got the time to prove it. Yeah, sure. And I were on the Fleming moon. So now you know. I'm sorry for whatever happened, but you've got the wrong person. Have you got a twin sister? No. Then I haven't got the wrong person. She took a picture of you, yes? When she got in your car, she took a picture. Why would she take a picture of me? She's my wife. All right, this has gone on long enough. Either you leave us alone or I'll call the police. You will? Hey, I'll save you the trouble, mate. I'm going to be calling the police. But I couldn't get a signal. So I left them, I ran into the shop and I asked the guy serving would he call the policeman. But of course, they weren't going to wait around, were they? So when I got back... No sign of them. And you're certain the young woman was the same one? I'm positive she's the type you don't forget. Especially when she's taken 250 off you. But the man with her, he insisted she was his wife. Yeah, and she... And you could see it. She was as surprised as anybody. Couldn't believe it. His wife? No way. OK. I'll tell you, that hard-faced bitch... She's capable of anything. <laughs> I suppose I should say thank you. Mm, but really, you're wondering why? Yeah. Yeah, me too. Your wife? Ma, I suppose I just didn't like his, you know, attitude. All that finger-pointing and grabbing hold of you. Then he wanted me to be on his side and agree with him, and I just thought, no, stuff you. But cards on the table, he was telling the truth, wasn't he? No. Oh, come on. No. I just saved your neck. I don't know who he was. I don't know what he was talking about, OK? Which I would have thought put us on the same side, but apparently not. You do this regular? Do what? Hitching in your short skirt. Waiting for a stupid man to pick you up. And all that stuff about where I ever left my purse. And the stupid man, he says, don't worry, I'll look after you. How much do you need? And he gives you 250, 400, even more. And you swap addresses, except yours is like the man said, Toy Town. No? Let me off at the next services. The next services? Sure, why not? Like I said, thanks. You know what? I wish I hadn't have done it. I wish I'd gone on to his side. At least he was being honest with me. So what do you want me to say? Yes, you're right, I was trying to con you. Are you happy now? You do it a lot? Sometimes. And it always works? Pretty well. Yeah, I bet. Okay, I promise you 400. Let's go and get it. <gasps> you're joking. You want it or not? Depends what I have to do for it. No, you don't have to do anything. Let's just say I enjoyed your company. I think 400 is a fair price. Only let's not pretend you're going to pay me back because you're not. It's a gift.
Anyway, if I don't give you this money, what are you going to do? I don't know. You're going to get some other stupid man to pick you up and you're going to pull the same stunt, yeah? You tell me. But maybe this next man, he might not have my sense of humour. Maybe he won't have any sense of humour. You'll be a full-blown psycho and you'll end up chopped into little pieces. Four hundred. There you go. And I'm supposed to say no, I can't take it. Say what you like. You're expecting sex for this. You think I'm going to feel all this money? I've got to give him something back. I don't think you're going to feel that, now. Too right. Though, you could join me for a coffee. You don't have to, but it would be nice. And don't worry, the coffee's on me. I pay for everything. They sat over there. By the window? Yeah. And why I remember is because they seemed, you know, um, a funny couple. Like they didn't belong together. Did they stay long? About half an hour. But talking all the time with their heads together like it was confidences made me think that they didn't know one another all that well because people who do just sit there without talking but these two never stopped. Yes, I was going to con you and yes, I conned that other guy and yes, there have been others before him. So, now you know. What's your real name? I told you. Amy. Yeah, I'm not sure I believe that. Believe it, don't believe. Wasn't it you that said we don't have to tell one another the truth? Yeah, that was a long way back. Things have happened since. Why do you do it? Why do you assess? Ah, I see. It's a career. For now. Did Jerry ever exist? You want to know why he dumped me? Why? I told him about the scam. Because every time I went down to see him, I'd arrive with this load of money. And he'd ask about it, and I'd lie, but then finally I couldn't think of any more lies, and I told him the truth. Mm, dangerous thing to do. He said he couldn't trust me anymore, and it made him wonder what else I might do. So, anyway, that was it. How did you get started? You really forgot your purse. I was itching. Going down to see Jerry. Ah. Guy picks me up. And he seems all right, normal. Expensive car. And then he pulls up in this little out-of-the-way road and tries to make me have sex with him. Persuade me, but then, when he can't persuade me, force me. But I won't. And I ask him, would he like somebody doing this to his daughter? Because he's told me he's got two daughters. And all of a sudden he's crying and pulling out his wallet and giving me all the money he had, which was a lot, hundreds. At first I wouldn't take it, but then I thought, what the hell? And so I did. Sounds of a whole new career. Still scares me to death every time I get into a car. Which is why you take the picture. Not that that's going to save me if I meet a real psycho, is it? No, but the money makes it worth it. Well, I need it if I'm ever going to move to London. My wife's always talking about that. Move to London. Yeah? Yeah. Uh, it's where her family came from, so... Moving back? Always going on about what we'd be doing if we were in London. Going here, there. I'd say, but we wouldn't be able to afford to go anywhere, she'd say which costs just the same to go and see a film in London as anywhere else. I suppose. Then I'd say you can only go and see a film in London if you're living in London. And it's the living that costs the money. Which would usually be when she'd tell me how she wished she hadn't married me and wasted her life. Yeah. So London's a topic I try and avoid. Mm. Anyway, you used to. Not anymore. Well, I don't have to anymore. She left me. Oh, no. Yeah. Left and gone to live, guess where? London. Birmingham. Oh! <laughs> yeah, oh. Birmingham. Sorry, I should have No, 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 be my guest. You're serious? She's really left you? Gone to stay with her sister. So she can have time to think. <laughs> That's what she said. Time to sort out what to do with the rest of her life. Oh, what a shame. She's... And you can believe this or not, it doesn't really matter. She's the only woman I've ever been with. You mean...? Yeah, the only one. Started going out at school. Her family had moved up and... I still remember that first day when we were told there's a new member of the class. And I saw her, she was blonde and shy and with this different accent to everybody else. I just knew straight away. Sounds crazy, but I did, you know. I, I knew straight away. 
So you've been seeing him since school? Yeah. We stayed together through college and we got married. And now she's left you? Yeah. Maybe she'll come back? Yeah, maybe. What, have you asked her to? I asked her, yeah. Begged her. I said, you want to move to London? I'll do that. Move anywhere. Do anything. But she still... She said she should never have married me. And they left together. But first they came back to the counter and they bought sandwiches and drinks to take out. Like they were planning on a picnic. I said that. Having a picnic, I said. And the man said, sort of, yes, but I could see they didn't want to talk. Anyway, not to me. They just wanted to get out. Actually, Marie, my wife. Yeah? Yeah, you were saying she might come back. She came back yesterday. Yeah, stayed about 35 minutes. What, just to collect her? Yeah, collect the things. I promised that I wouldn't be there, but huh, I was. Gave her a shot, which I didn't mean to, but... You wanted to talk to her? Yeah. Next junction? Yeah. I wanted to talk to her, yeah. I asked her if there was any chance, you know, the slightest chance she might come back. And? Um... Nah. She said no. I said since she'd left me, it was like she could breathe again. Like she'd had this weight lifted. What a bitch. Yeah. Sorry, I shouldn't say no. that. Oh, when we've come off, it's first left off the roundabout. No. Then, um, oh, five minutes, and it's this little, well, it's not even a road, a track. It's like you're in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> Good place to be. Are you sure you have time for this? Don't you have to be assessing somewhere? All the time in the world. Don't worry about that. Just, I didn't want to stay in that cafe any longer. No, me neither. In case George had gone to the police. George? The man that recognised <laughs> me. George. <laughs> I just hope this place hasn't been turned into a housing estate. Wasn't that right? Isn't this lovely? Nice, yeah. I used to have this boyfriend who was a biker and we'd go all over and this was sometimes where we used to stop. Oh, for a picnic? For a shag, mostly. <laughs> right. But sometimes we had a picnic as well. <laughs> so, what have you got? Uh, Plowman's, tuna and sweet corn, and cheese and pickle. Do you often do that? Hitch in lift? Not often, no. So why this time? I had no money and wanted to get to London. I was able to get the old thumb out and start walking. How long have you been trying for a lift? Best part of an hour. Man on his own, nobody wants to know. Well, lorry drivers might take you, but that particular junction doesn't seem to be any. You'd been drinking? So? Just say. You'd been drinking? I'd been drinking, sure. How old are you? 36. Plenty of time to meet somebody else. I'm not getting married, go through it all again. Have her leave again. She might not. Anyway. I don't know that I could. You've really never slept with anyone else? Well, that's not why. I'm, I'm not saying that's why. No, I'm, I'm not saying... But it must be... Well, it must make it harder. <laughs> Didn't seem a problem for her. For you, why? What did I say? She'd gone to her sister's. You know, that's... That's what I've been telling people. Which is fine. You tell people whatever you want to tell them. She's gone to live with another man, Martin. His name's Martin. Someone you know? No. He was this rep. He used to call when she was at work. How long's it been going on? Well, she says not long, but it could be years. How would I know? I thought we were OK. Not the odd row, but OK. Then she comes and tells me she's leaving, and I say, but where are you going to go? And that's the first I hear about Martin. I'm sorry. Well, it's not your fault. And you see... She's like me. Can only ever one person in her life. So when she told me about Martin, I, I knew this wasn't a fling. Something that wasn't going to go away. Oh, come here. <laughs> I'm 
sorry. I'm so sorry. No. No, it's pathetic. <laughs> You're not pathetic. I was like this with Jerry, and I'd oh. only known him, what, six months? Just... Oh, try and forget about her. I suppose that's why I picked you up. I couldn't stop thinking about her, so I thought, you know, maybe somebody to talk to. Then you got me. So now you think as if your wife wasn't bad enough. Oh, no. You get this con artist. Oh, that doesn't matter. Well, you know, maybe... Maybe I can help take your mind off her. For one thing, your wife's left you. That means you're a single man. So well, you can, you know, do what you want. I thank you for that was. Oh, I think you do. I think what you'd like, you'd like to kiss me. Ah. Uh, <laughs> so why don't you? Well, but this wasn't why I picked you up. No. No, or why I gave you the money. Yeah, and if I thought that, then this won't be happening. So? One last kiss. What? Uh, uh, One last I, I kiss, did, no, did I, I, didn't, I didn't mean, I'm sorry. So, do you want to... I'm taking your clothes off, and then we're going to make love. But finally you got lucky. Somebody did stop. Yes. What happened? Car stopped, two of a minute. The man who was driving, he asked me where I wanted to go, and I said London. And he said something like, then this is your lucky day. And she laughed like it was a joke. But you know, I've been stood there nearly an hour. They could joke all they like, so long as they give me a lift. Anyway, that's what I thought then. So? So? Well, at least now you know what it's like to sleep with somebody else. Or oh, wasn't that true? Oh, go on, tell me you've had hundreds of women. <laughs> <laughs> no. I'm not sure I believe it. You thinking about your wife? What she'd think if she knew about this? No. What are you thinking then? I know just how strange life is. How we haven't any of us got a clue what's going to happen next. And I didn't do that because of the money you gave me. I wasn't thinking. I might be a con artist, but I'm not a hooker. Well, you're an actress. Well, I suppose it is acting of a sort. Hey, if it was an audition, you'd have passed with flying colours. <laughs> you mean I'm a good liar? And you're good at being somebody else, isn't that what it's all about? Suppose. Well, they're looking for your purse. I believe every word, you know. Great performance. Oh, no, no, no. I can't have. <laughs> Brilliant. Oh, no, it's by the bed on my little table. I can Oscar see Oscar winning. <laughs> You'd give me an Oscar. <laughs> Best actress. Hey, and I'd make a speech and I'd say, well, thank you for this wonderful <laughs> award. I owe everything to my friend... Uh, sorry. Um, John. I owe everything to my friend John, who is an assessor and who has assessed my career. <laughs> Very good. And who made me the star I am today. So you got in the car. In the bike. And she's turning around to talk to me and, and I can see him through the mirror uh, if he can picture it. Yeah, they're in the front, you're in the back. First thing I'm thinking, just what are they on? What are they on? Because they were like... You know what they made me think of? A pair of kids. A pair of kids on a day out. All excited, couldn't stop talking. First I think, what are they on? Then I start thinking, why have they picked me up? What's going on with these two and how do I fit in? Only see if I did become a star. When? When, thank you. Well, some newspaper's going to dig all this up about my past and the scamming I've done. Not from me. Not from you, from George. Ah, George. Yeah, George would sell his story. Yeah, you know, I think he would. <laughs> Oscar winner conned me. <laughs> I can see it now. And then there'd be all the headlines and I'd have to... Oh, I don't know, sue the newspapers. Oh, look. Oh, let's give him a lift. You want to? Oh, sorry, I shouldn't say, should Oh, that's OK. No, it's your car. Oh, we will. Why not? Where are you going? Well, London. But anywhere in that direction would be great. Yeah, get in. 
Cheers, mate. That's fantastic. It's your lucky day. <laughs> Sorry, what? He says it's your lucky day. I wasn't feeling like it. You know how long I've been stuck on that slip road? I know. Over an hour. Oh, no. One guy, you won't believe this, he stops and lets me get close up to the car and he shouts, sod off, you bleeding tramp, and drives off. Not nice. Oh, that is awful. What have I ever done to him? Well, there are some nasty people about. I suppose, Hitchin, you got to be prepared for anything. <laughs> sod off, you bleeding tramp. <laughs> What's your name? Liam. You from Ireland? Donegal. Well, Liam, I'm Amy. And uh, this man here is my husband, John. Nice to meet you, John. And you. Yeah, we're going to have a weekend in London to celebrate our wedding anniversary. Yeah? Aren't we, darling? And just which anniversary is this? What, you don't know? Or you think I don't know? Oh, I think maybe neither of us know. <laughs> second. Ah, right, second. Yeah. He thought I'd forgotten. Forgotten how long you've been married? <laughs> She's joking. I think so. Of course I am. Could hardly forget our marriage, could I? Two years. And do you know what, Liam? We have never had a single argument. Have we, darling? Uh, not that I remember. Not that he remembers, I like it. So do I. Anyway, happy anniversary. Thank you. Thanks. Have a drop of whiskey here if either of you fancies it. Oh, yeah, I will. Why not? Darling, do you want a drink? No, no, I won't, thanks. Because he's driving. Yeah, sure. He doesn't drink when he's driving, do you, darling? No, no. Well, here you go, then. Oh, cheers. <laughs> cheers. Mmm. <clears throat> used to hitch, didn't I, darling? You did, yeah. But he won't let me now. Will he not? No, he thinks it's too dangerous. Isn't that right, darling? You think it's too dangerous? Yeah. Another drink? Mmm. Cheers. Mmm. <laughs> you know what? I was once hitching and I got picked up by a man called George. Do you remember I told you, darling? I do, yeah. And he wanted me to do things. I won't ask what. And I wouldn't. So he took me to a service station, called the police and told them I was trying to rob him. No. Only I managed to get away before the police came. So I know about Hitchin, now it's dangerous. Why don't you give Liam his whiskey back, eh? No, she's OK. No, you have it. He wants you to have it. You have it. Oh, cheers. Happy now? Yeah. Didn't know your wife isn't supposed to drink? Let's say I don't like her drinking too much. I'd say you don't like her doing anything. You going to London, Liam? London, yeah. Ah, what's that for? Business? Pleasure? Well, Been promised a job. Ah, what sort of job? Find out when I get there. Been inside, you see. In prison. And I this meet has promised to get me fixed up. In prison? Yeah. What were you in for? Uh, Liam might not want to tell us that. Well, then he doesn't have to tell us. He can just say that he doesn't want to tell us. Liam, do you want to tell us? I don't mind. So what was it, then? You know what GBH is? Grievous bodily harm? That's what I was in for. And how does it feel to be out? Feels good, yeah. Well, how do you think it feels, darling? I mean, you know, please. Liam, I apologise for my husband's stupid questions. No, that's OK. Of course it feels good. Though, so, I tell you what did come as a shock. What's that, Liam? Way everything's gone up. I couldn't believe it. Been inside for five years. Come out, the price of everything is double what it was. It probably is, yeah. First pub I go in. I thought the bomb was having me on. He points to where the prices are all written up. Don't know how anyone can afford to drink anymore. Are you short a minute? I'm not asking. Don't, don't get me wrong. No, but you are, yeah? Hasn't everybody? So, let me give you some. No, no, Just no. to tide you over. No. But actually, it's not mine anyway. It, this is money that my husband gave me. Didn't you, darling? Oh, he's not talking to us. Anyway, it is. And I don't need this much. Here. Hundred. Well, that out. I'd be a great help, but... Well, then take it. Here, go on, take it. Well, cheers. That, that, I'm very grateful. Married Liam, 
once, yeah. Not anymore. Thank God, no. Do you think we'll ever get divorced, darling? No. He's still not talking to me. I think maybe, uh... John, is it the money? Yes? It's you not It's not the money. I don't think he approves. I don't have to. I want to give somebody money. I will. Won't I? Sure. Yeah, OK. So why are you being like this? I think it's my fault. John, smile. Come on. Have you forgotten? It's our wedding anniversary. I think it's the money. Let's tell Liam about our wedding. Big wedding in a church, wasn't it? And Liam, you should have seen me. I looked so beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful, didn't I? I think it's the money. I shouldn't have taken it. I was there in my white wedding dress. And you said how beautiful I was. Don't tell me you've forgotten that. Can you just shut up, please? What did you say? I said shut up! We, you heard that, Liam. This is how my husband speaks to me. You take the money back. Don't tell me, Marie, you're beautiful anymore. No, no, you're not Marie. Well, and shouldn't you be grateful that I'm not somebody who walks out on you and goes off with another man? OK, that's... Hey! What are you doing? Oh, my God. This is ending now. You can both of you get out of my I'm car. I'm Just get out! Kid. Get out! And he's on the hard shoulder. And he's opened the door. Never mind there's traffic not two feet away. He's the door open and he's telling her to get out. But the girl won't. She says no. Which is when he grabs her and tries to pull her out. Get out, you stupid ignorant... Oh, and you, both of you, get out of my car. Get out, I've had enough. Come on, get out. Get out. I thought I was going to die. And you don't know why? No, because everything up to then, we'd been like friends, just talking, getting on. Anyway, I thought so till he turned on me and tried to kill me. Stupid, stupid bitch. Oh, please, you're hurting me. You're a maniac, are you? Not Marie. No. Go of her. You're not my wife. I'm John, by the way. Amy. Amy. Yes. I'm sorry. Please. One last kiss. You lost something. No, not lost, but left. Um, I've got to tell you, this is I my wife. Say thank you. Yes. Yes. Really, you're wondering why? You're what? Twelve years. Yeah. My wife. No! Go over! You're not my wife! Oh, anyway, happy anniversary. Thank you. Thanks. Why? Marie. Nice name. Oh, have you ever been married, Liam? Sounds of a whole new career. Wife. One last kiss. So, so, so. Hitching in your short skirt. Don't tell me, you're Marie. You're waiting you for a stupid man anymore. to pick you up. I'm taking your clothes off. No, you're not. Why are you not going to make love? No, you're not, Marie. No! Go over! You're not my wife! You're not going to stick this on me. Those two, I've never seen them before. I've never met them before. They gave me a lift. Then she got off her head with a drink. And there was all that nonsense with them trying to throw her out the car. But that is all I know, as God's my witness. I've told you about the scam, and I know I'm going to be done for that, but nothing else, no. We weren't ever, like you said, conspiring. How could we be? I'd never even set eyes on him before he stopped on the motorway to give me a lift. Mr. John Tully. Yeah. Mr. Tully, you do not have to say anything, but it may harm your defence if you do not mention when questioned something which you later rely on in court. Anything you do say may be given in evidence. You understand? Yeah. Can I just ask how is, uh, what she called Amy? She's fine, saving a few cuts and bruises. I, I didn't mean to hurt her. And the man who was with you, he's OK too. Good. Our officers have carried out an inspection of your car, which involved opening the boot. Who is she, Mr. Tully? The body you were carrying in the boot of your car, who is she? My... Uh, my wife. Your wife? Marie. And did you kill her? Did I, I killed her, yes. She was leaving me. She'd come back to the house to collect some things. I, 
I said I wouldn't be there, but I was. Well, I should have known you wouldn't miss a chance for a scene. I just want to know what I've done wrong. Oh, this again. Well, and don't I deserve an explanation? We've been together one way or another, best part of 20 years, and now you're walking you out. You've had an explanation. No. I've fallen in love with somebody no, else. No, that's not, that's not. Yes! Only you won't believe it or you don't want to believe it. And so you force me to say awful things about you. I can't stand being with I'll you. I'll change. Things will be different. It's got to do with that. So what is it? I'm telling you, but you won't listen. I have fallen in love with somebody else. No. Yes. No. It's just... You ask you me where I'm going and I'll tell you, but you don't believe me. Because it's not I true. I will just go round no, and round. No, don't go, Marie, which please. Which is why I didn't no. want you to be here today. It'll be different, but Of course swear. you have to be, don't you? Please. And so we're still going round and round. One more chance. No! And now I've had enough of this. I'm sorry, but I've had enough. I'm going. No! I don't want you... No, you're not going! Oh, you're going to stop me, are you? You're going to physically stop me leaving? Please! Look! John, I will ring you. Once I'm there, I will ring you. I promise. No. Look, OK, that is it. I've really had enough. Let me pass, please. No, no, just... Oh, for just, goodness just sake, John! Out. Please. One last kiss. What? Then you can go. One last kiss. Please? All right, then. Oh. Oh. <laughs> uh, did I strangle her? There'll be a post oh, I, th I think I think I did. I, I did didn't mean to, but... Um... See, I, I loved her. I couldn't let her go. I could never have let her go. Marie, Emma Atkins. D.I. Barnes, Martin Reeve. George Anthony Flanagan and Liam Seamus O'Neill. The Longest Journey was written by Peter Worley and directed in Manchester by Pauline Harris. <laughs>